So in 20 minutes, uh, Denmark, France is going to start. I really hope Denmark is going to win. And one thing about the World Cup, what's going on with all these mistakes in the VAR decisions? Uh, when there's a VAR, there's a TV, there's no possibility for mistake. I don't understand how there can be a bunch of penalties that are awarded that shouldn't have been and stuff like that. Okay, but anyway, uh, welcome to my Airbnb here, um, escaping from the uh, freezing uh, temperature of Europe uh, here for $20 per day you can get some Airbnbs all over the world check it out very important so I'd like to talk just for a second just a little bit about the Twitter and the Twitter phone that's been rumored that I've been predicting for a while now since Elon Musk has been talking about doing the the Twitter uh, acquisition um, people are running scared the elites are running scared next week this week coming right now uh, thousands and thousands of accounts are going to be unbanned. Um, everybody who's been talking openly about what's been happening in the last three years are going to be unbanned. People are really scared. And uh, let me stand over here in my little window. So, there is going to be a Twitter phone and it's going to be a piece of cake to make it. Um, you know, like the iPhone, I've been saying this for the last 15 years and I've always been right, but somehow there hasn't been a billionaire ready to take on Apple and Google. It's very simple. China is making flagship phones for two or three hundred dollars. That's the manufacturing cost of a, something that's as good as an iPhone. Okay, two or three hundred dollars. That's it. All Elon Musk has to do is go to China, find a good one, find a nice finished design and just put a Twitter logo on it and then sell it for two or three hundred dollars. It's that easy. He's not gonna make money on the hardware. But that's the thing. When you own a platform like Twitter, you should be making money on your platform. So the way you do is you destroy the competition that doesn't have a platform. Apple doesn't have a platform. They just have Apple TV and whatever. They have iTunes, that's not a platform. So you destroy your competition by providing consumers with something as good for three times cheaper. It's very simple and Elon Musk could do it. He should do it no matter what. No matter if they kick Twitter off the Play Store and people say, oh, how is he gonna do an OS? It's called Android. It's open source, it's free, and it comes with Google Play no matter what you do. You can put Google Play on it. You don't have to follow Google's rules. These Google rules are illegal. They've been, um, uh, um, like it's, it's definitive. The EU has said they are legal. Google has to pay $6 billion in fines. These rules are not to be followed. So you just put the Google Play on those phones and if Google tries to block you, you spoof the, the phone ID. So you just make it look like a, some other Chinese phone. How is Google gonna know? No, no. They're never gonna know. It's that simple. And then what you do is you copy all the apps from Google Play Store you copy without asking anyone. You don't ask the developers. You take them all. It's like APK mirror. You do some kind of mirror of all the Google Play apps. You put them in your Play Store. And what you do is very simple. You don't take a profit from the in-app purchases. So you just take 5% instead of 30. And all the developers are going to be happy. And they're going to migrate their in-app activities to the Twitter App Store which is going to be on Google Play. They might try to kick that off too. But the thing is, let them try. Let Apple try. Elon Musk has connections in China. He's built the most successful factory in Shanghai for the Tesla. He can make one phone call to his friends in the Chinese government, one phone call, and China can finally make the decision that should have been taken a decade ago. They can ban all manufacturing and all sales of Apple devices not just in China. They will ban it for the whole world. China has this power. China can end all Chromebooks overnight. They can just make only the Twitter Chromebooks. Who knows? You know, like Elon Musk just goes in a partnership with China and says, here, I don't want to profit on the hardware. I think the people who make the work, which is the Chinese people, should get the money not some lawyer and some marketing people in California, okay? So give the profit on the hardware to the Chinese people and just put a Twitter logo on it, that's it. Or call it the Tesla phone. And then there's one or two features he could be adding. Starlink connection. 
I did one video, I will link it below. Um, there is this LCD based satellite antenna, which can be integrated on the LCD, potentially also, I'm not sure, uh, on the OLED, but I think it's mainly an LCD, no, no, it's an LCD technology. So the phone needs to have an LCD display, not an OLED. And then that phone display will enhance the satellite connection, not only to the Starlink 2.0 satellites, even to the Star Sa Starlink 1.0. You might not get 100 megabit, but you might get one megabit, who knows? And that they could be integrating into the display, that would be one like improvement. And they could have that exclusive, they could cut Apple off this thing. So I'm just uh, giving you a little bit of an opinion. I think, um, you know, the first amendment, whatever they call it in the US, private companies shouldn't be impeding on that. Like politicians shouldn't be telling like social media who to kick off social media platforms and this whole um, uh, like uh, uh, information warfare that's been going on. This needs to stop. Let people say what they think about all the important issues every day and stop, stop censoring, stop the censorship. That's what I think. And uh, you know, I've been on Twitter for longer than Elon Musk actually. I was like there for 15 years or something like that. And I've always thought Twitter is horrible. It's a shitty kind of uh, a social media platform, but now potentially could be improved. Why I think it's bad, it's because 99% of Twitter users don't get any real usage out of it. Like if you post, on, if you tweet something, 99% of people won't get any people even read it or respond to it because it's just a waste of bits. That's the way I see it. But if you get an algorithms marketplace where you can better sort through all the content and where the number of followers don't matter and all these followers are fake, most of them are fake, but that's how it's been working. They have boosted people. They could have boosted me, but because I was publicly very critical of Twitter since the beginning, I always thought it was shit. So they haven't you know, given me that like 100,000 free fake followers like that's many other Twitter users have, has, have had. And those people who are the elites uh, think they're, they, they're entitled to, to, those, to, to, to being in that privileged like 1%. They wanna remain in the 1%. The thing is, it's not gonna happen anymore. The, the, hopefully, I mean, who knows, maybe he doesn't do it the right way, but if it's done in the right way, there'll be much more than just like, you know, timeline of little tweets and stuff. It'll be a Twitter video, they'll compete with YouTube. It'll be uh, x.com, they'll compete with PayPal and compete with Wise and all this other stuff. They'll compete with crypto because it won't be crypto based. It'll be um, just a easy cloud-based currency system. This could happen, this could be done. And like 100 other potential products that could be added on this platform. So check it out, that's just my opinion. Let's go watch the football.